If your goal was to be absolutely cringy and gross your audience out, good job. Ew. guys welcome back to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss blonde now this is a brand new movie available on netflix and it stars anna de Armas. now before i get into all things just why i need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video i'm going to give you guys a moment to do that and then we're going to come back and discuss i mean i am not going to sit here and act like i am some marilyn monroe fanatic but I do know fictional book or not this is the worst possible way that she could ever be portrayed Go back, 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 back. have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the video and the spectacle that is this film there were actually some things I liked here majority of that is due to Arma de Armas oh my gosh there is pretty much an all-star cast here but she gave a phenomenal performance as Marilyn Monroe from start to finish I feel like she embodied her. I mean, there were moments where her accent, because it is thick, seeped through, but that didn't bother me at all. I was just so captivated by her performance and her tapping into Marilyn on such an emotional level. As dehumanizing as this movie is, she managed to be vulnerable, sexy, emotional, intelligent, just an absolute star all while having this sinking sense of desperation. She was so tortured and miserable here in this movie, all while wanting everybody around her, wanting her life, wanting everything that she had to be more than what it actually was. And it just wasn't that for her. She did so great stepping into this role. It almost saddened me that it was used here in this movie. I also really enjoyed the scenes that we got here that involved any substance, even though they were far few and in between her just being sexualized and screaming and crying all over the place. The few moments of depth that we got into Marilyn were great. The scene that we have with her tapping into her childhood, that relationship with her mother, where she's auditioning for Don't Bother to Knock, and that being one of the few movies where she wasn't, you know, designated as, you know, the sex bomb or the uh, the dumb blonde, and she really got to show range and emote, and you see her tapping into that vulnerability to project. That was an awesome scene, even though it's undermined immediately afterwards. Or even simple things like her conversation that she has with her soon-to-be husband, Arthur. And we get, you know, a moment to see how well-versed and how well-read she was. Because a lot of people don't know that, like, oh, Marilyn read books? Yes, yeah, she did. She read books and, you know, she gets to share her uh, traits as far as what she read and how she felt about the characters. Just, just to show something outside of the typical things that we see see a lot of these movies not just this one and it's in c17 rating choose to focus on the more low vibrational points of her life you know we get more into the relationships the marriages the hinted at uh, abortions the drugs the downward spiral and you know all the the torment but we don't get into you know what was her favorite color you know what does she like to do on the weekends what does she like to eat what does she like to cook? You know, simple things just to, you know, show her in a different light outside of this one. When still to this day, several decades later, we are still playing up that Marilyn persona, not, you know, making her personal, making her approachable, giving her any depth. We are still playing up that sexuality, that exploitative side, like they did back then, to sell. 
This movie produced by Brad Pitt and directed by Andrew Dominic, who does not have a whole ton of credits to his name. He does have Killing Them Softly that also stars Brad Pitt, but this feels like this was his moment to really get out there and make a statement for himself. And the way that he decided to portray Marilyn, portray, you know, the thoughts that were in this fictional book, this has really got people talking. And it's definitely still at the expense of Miss Marilyn Monroe. Despite how graphic this movie is and how disturbing some people may find it, this movie is trending. This movie is number one. This movie is being talked about whether people want to go off and discover, you know, how graphic it is for themselves. People want to talk about the writer, the director, which is also Andrew Dominic and understand, you know, why would you do this? Or maybe some people think that this is awesome. Bottom line, Marilyn is still being used and sold at this moment to this day. And while this movie is definitely not perfection on many fronts, some of the direction in the cinematography here is absolutely fabulous to look at. The way that we use uh, transitions between black and white, color to maybe display some of Marilyn's emotions at that moment, the way that the ratio and the blocking of the film is framed to where you kind of get that old Hollywood-esque feel. And then, you know, a lot of the transitions give you, you know, this airiness, these surreal moments, the slow motion shot, the different hues, the lighting. This movie is really, really stylish. But unfortunately, that's pretty much all it has going for it. And we chose to be stylish over giving us some substance. And this is totally life imitating art. This movie definitely had the potential to be more, but getting into the things that I didn't like about this film, even outside of the graphic stuff, the basics of this film are not good. The pacing of this movie is terrible. To start, this movie is actually pretty much three hours long for us to go nowhere and accomplish nothing with Marilyn. Due to the writing, we choose to give this non-conventional highlight reel of Marilyn's life and it just does not make any sense. I am in no way against creative approaches, but we definitely just focused on making this movie stylish. There is no character development for anybody here, including Marilyn. I do not feel for her at all, not even with us beginning with her childhood, instantly beginning with trauma on top of trauma with her as Norma Jean, all the way until she's built up and transforms into this Marilyn Monroe character. The dialogue and all of the exchanges between the actors here when they are on screen is terrible. This movie thought it was way smarter than it was. Everything we learn about Marilyn is very quick, it's shallow, it's alarming, it's to show her in the worst possible light, strictly for nothing other than shock value. Trying way too hard to press the envelope, oh this is Marilyn Monroe, this is her you know sick sad tragic life, you thought, you know, she was this Hollywood icon, this starlet, this beloved woman, but you know, behind closed doors, she was this, she was going through this, all this torture, all this torment. Isn't it graphic? Isn't it in your face? No, it's, it, it's disgusting. <laughs> when it's not being absolutely depraved and disgusting, it's being boring. There are moments of this movie, despite all that they try to throw at you, that it's just boring or the director just simply engaging way too much in every single aspect of this movie. This movie is almost three hours long and it absolutely did not have to be. It seemed like he didn't know when to cap anything, to cut anything off. If we were at, you know, a disturbing S point of, a, of, of the movie, which there were many, we didn't know when to cut away from those things or get into something else. If she was, you know, descending, disturbed, the behaviors kicking in, we are lingering in these moments and everything just continues to go on and on and on. We didn't know when to put the cap on our actors, when to tell them, hey, stop being so frantic and screaming, let's cut away to something. No, we, it just continued to go. And it's just like, when does this end? I found myself checking the time just to see 
how much longer I was gonna have to subject myself to give you guys this review. It was just never ending. It was absolutely terrible. This movie is extremely triggering also. Not only are we getting into a lot of graphic subject matter, but there is this running theme of exploitation, not only for Marilyn, but for our lead actress who is portraying Marilyn, Anna. There are numerous scenes where she is topless for really long extended periods of time for absolutely no reason. There were moments here where I felt sorry for her and I'm sure that that was very intentional so that we could feel sorry for Marilyn, but that's not how we really want to see her framed. The relationship here that she has with her mother from the very beginning, not ever really being wanted, that disconnect from, you know, that lack of a father following her throughout her life, clinging to these men looking for that as well as her career as an actress, getting the same thing in return. We're getting controlled, her demeanor, she's sexualized, she's taken advantage of, she's underpaid. She is just strictly there in these relationships, in these studios, in these movies, in these offices as a prop. Something to be used, abused, and propped up all at the same damn time. Does this movie choose to elaborate in any way on anything outside of these gross things? Absolutely not. Though this movie is based on a fictional novel, it's all about perception. A lot of things in this movie aren't even true. They are contrived, they are, you know, hinted at, maybe even a rumor, but any truth lying here at all is very vague and very thin. So what we end up getting is, you know, a whole movie. Like it's like it plays out like a terrible tabloid when we have her go and visit her mother, when we have her engaged in the threesome and all the other gross aspect of being with uh, Chaplin Jr. and Eddie Robinson Jr. Like it is just so gross. There were so many moments and explicit things in this film as far as her life was concerned that I found myself going, where are we supposed to go with this? And what am I supposed to get from this? If we are literally 10 minutes into the film and we don't know anything about her, but the very first perception that we get from her as the adult Marilyn is face down ass up POV shots of her in an executive's office on a casting couch for a role. Like those framed POV shots of her face while she is indulging in this grotesque, forced, traumatic, ah, oh, like, I was just so disgusted. That whole entire John F. Kennedy situation with her being basically kidnapped and forced to immediately give him, like, what is, why? Like, what is going on here? It was just, it was just layer up on another layer. Like, not only do we have to deal with this freaking thrumple in the movie for longer than I care to, but on top of that, we have her continue to repeatedly get pregnant and the POV and angles or shots or whatever that they decide to use to depict her getting rid of the baby or, you know, maybe her possibly mis- it, 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 was, it was just terrible, but the angle and how they decided to frame her face, it was just so demeaning. I hate it all of it and don't even get me started on the cgi fetus in her stomach talking to her like ah the way that they decided to frame her basically self-sabotaging destructing not really connecting to that marilyn character feeling like you know she ever only wanted to be herself she wanted to be loved but they took that need for her to be loved even though it may have been in a desperate way due to her upbringing, they like dialed it up like 20 times higher than it ever needed to be. We have to repeatedly have her go through abuse, different, you know, situations of her being constantly used and her calling these men daddy 24 seven, like, oh, really driving home that point of, oh, she has daddy issues. 
And like every other single aspect of this movie, there was no line drawn anywhere. And it was just like, enough is enough. How long are we gonna linger and repeatedly do the same things? As an audience, we get it. Not only do we get it, but we would have maybe gotten it even more if you had maybe shown us, maybe, you know, sprinkled a little truth in here to show us how she got there. Show us more, you had three hours to do it. <laughs> show us, you know, her real, you know, true upbringing, that relationship with her mother that constant time that she spent uh, in the orphanage really you know kind of being thrown out with nothing at you know 15 16 going from home to home trying to figure her way out really struggling to be a star because she uh, really gravitated to you know how they were treated and how they were loved and she wanted that for herself that's why she would maybe even want to subject herself to a casting couch just to maybe accomplish like like make one plus one equal two like we didn't even bother to do that but what we do decide to indulge in is strictly and only trauma who was this for 50 percent of this is just absolutely fictional the other half is suffering from bad pacing <laughs> bad writing at some points overacting like it's just a whole lot of nothing going on when we had three hours to accomplish something nothing here really introduced any new ideas and nothing here showed Marilyn in a particularly good light so I, I just don't know what purpose it served now I do think the worst aspect of this movie is that it is available you know right there for the picking on Netflix and the younger generation and you know the ger generation after that and maybe even some people who just don't know anything about Marilyn well, watch this. When I went into watching this, I didn't, you know, dig up anything on it to know that it was based on a fictional book and that most of the things here were really dramatized and fictional at that. If nobody knows, then nobody is going to go to know anything. A lot of people now still idolize her, you know, use her image, you know, you'll get a shirt, try to get the, you know, the Halloween costume and sing the songs and happy birthday, Mr. President and whatnot. But many idolize the Marilyn Monroe persona and don't take out the time to actually know who she was. So somebody could possibly watch this and go, oh my Lord, I never knew. This is all real. Like people are bonkers. <laughs> that is really, really sad. So I'm hoping that anybody, you know, who gravitates to watching this, maybe do your due diligence to go and look up, you know, more aspects of her outside of the trauma because she is, you know, a, a special woman and she shouldn't just be idolized for the bombshell persona. And maybe one day we will get something with more depth and we're not focusing so much solely on the trauma and the man that she, you know, surrounded herself with. Maybe one day we can just get to know Marilyn as a person, but I doubt that that's gonna come. We always kind of sort of get the same things. I actually wish they would just leave this lady alone. Like just let her rest, leave her alone. She has been used, objectified, sexualized, and profited enough. Leave her alone. Well, you guys, that was my review for Blonde. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me what you thought about my review and what you thought about this film as a whole. I really look forward to reading your comments. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video. I see you guys next time. Bye.